Hi, in today's video I want to show you how to create credit notes on NetSuite. So there are two ways. You can either do it straight from an invoice that you know you need to credit. So you're going to need to look for the invoice reference here. In case you forgot about it, you can go to the customer, go to their transactions and find it there. Or you can go to transactions, sales, create invoices list. And then you're going to find your list here and then use filters to find the uh, the actual invoice you're looking for. Uh, maybe filter it down by date or uh, internal ID. Now, once you get to your invoice, you're going to be viewing it. You're not going to be looking at it on edit mode. You're going to be viewing the invoice and then you're going to see the credit button here. If you don't see a credit button here, it means that the uh, role that you have, the permission that you're using is not allowing you to create credit notes. So you're going to have to talk to your NetSuite administrator to uh, have him or her uh, grant you this access. Or maybe it's just someone else in your team that is supposed to be doing credit notes. So just let them know the invoice needs to be credited. Anyway, you're on the invoice, so you clicked on credit. So it's going to take the, all the information of the invoice. Uh, with the uh, quantities, the items, the, the prices. So you can decide to make a credit note for the full invoice. You just click on save and it will credit the whole invoice. Or you can remove some lines from the credit uh, memo. So it's just going to uh, build a credit memo on the value of the items that you keep. Or you can, if you have only one item, but let's say uh, they want a discount or they want something like a credit memo because maybe there was a problem with the service delivered, you might want to change the price level to custom and instead of five, maybe put two here. And then what you'll do is you will click on OK and save. OK, that, that's one way of doing it. So the other way of doing it is by going to transaction and then going to customers and issue credit memos. Now there's a step that's required for this to work correctly. And there's also a control to have. So first of all, when you create this credit memo on standalone, maybe you know which item this uh, customer needs a credit on and maybe on his next purchase uh, with your company, they're gonna get a credit on specific items. So if you know which items they are, you can enter the items below here. If you don't know what items th these people are gonna be applying this uh, credit note on in the future, then you can, of course, create a new item. I created here a service item called unapplied credit. Uh, it's a service for sale. And what I did is uh, on this uh, item, I'm going to open it for you, uh, on the accounting section. Now, obviously, this account is the account that's going to be credited on any sales invoice, you know, uh, but since this is a credit note, then this is the account that's going to be debited on the credit note. So, of course, you're never going to be uh, using unapplied credit uh, items on sales invoices you're just going to be applying them to credit memo. This is why uh, this account is going to be used as the account to be debited. Uh, I set the sales account to be debited when you create and save the credit memo. Okay, so once you are aware of this, uh, there is uh, the next thing to, to look at now, which is the control. What I mean by this is when you create an invoice, you have to be very careful that on the accounting setup, the receivable account that you're using is the actual receivable account that's being used on the credit memo too. For example, here, if I go to the accounting setup of the credit memo, I have to make sure that we've got the same receivable account. If not, then when you go to transaction, uh, customers and issue credit memo, you will not be able to see the um, available credit memos to apply on this customer. You know, so you just have to make sure the receivable accounts are the same. Now, once this is done, um, you save your, your credit memo, your unapplied credit memo. And then at a later stage, you're going to go to transactions, customers, accept customer payment. And this is once you've had, like once you've sent the customer invoices 
and they've got these unapplied credit memos, this is where you're going to want to make sure you're, you're picking the right receivable account. Uh, of course, uh, scroll down to uh, the apply section. And then you're going to see here invoices and credits. Okay. If you did not use the, right, the same receivable accounts on the invoice and credit, you're not going to be able to do this. So what you want to do now is click on apply on invoice and click on apply on credit. So right now, what happens is the credit member value of 595 has been applied to the invoice that has been selected here. So maybe you have many invoices too, by the way. It could be one credit memo applied to many invoices. Now, of course, it's only the uh, the amount of the invoice that's going to be applied from the credit memo. So if the credit memo was of 595 uh, USD, it's only five that are going to be uh, applied from this credit memo to this invoice. The remaining credit memo is going to be open to be applied to future invoices. Okay, once you've done this, you can click on save. Okay, now it's asking me a value for location because it's a mandatory fail. I'm going to click on save here. And what it will do is now it will have uh, applied this credit memo to the invoice. Okay, so now we go back to the original invoice that we applied the credit memo against, and we see now that it's been paid in full, so it's not open anymore. If we scroll down, we see uh, on the related records, which is somewhere here. Uh, if I click on this, I can see here that there is a credit memo, number 86, that has been applied to it. And that's the way, the second way, to create credit memos and apply it to uh, an invoice. Now, if you go to the credit memo itself and you go to, to Actions and GL Impact, you will be able to see the impact that this credit memo had on your gen uh, general ledger. Okay, so that's all for today. I hope that this video was useful to you. If so, don't forget to leave a like or subscribe and I will see you on the next video. Thank you and goodbye.